Hey everyone, thanks so much for the warm response to and interest in my just released online video course, The Fine Art of Photomontage. Many of you have asked if it's possible to see previews or examples from the actual course. So in response to your requests, it's my absolute pleasure to share this quote unquote official trailer with extended excerpts from the course. The examples in the reel are from the second module of the course, the behind the curtain view of my image Shakri's Morning Prayers from the series Once Upon a Time in Kajimersh. I hope you enjoy it and I hope to see you online in the fine art of photomontage. In the meantime, thank you so much in advance for watching. Like all of my work from the past 10 years, this image was created by digitally marrying photographs of hand-built dioramas with photographs of live models. I begin every project by doing extensive research, in this case on elements like architecture, culture, dress, and hairstyles. My goal is to totally immerse myself emotionally in the subject matter. I also create a mood board of images, which functions as a springboard for visual ideas and concepts. For this particular image, I wanted to do a backlit bedroom scene, largely inspired by this photograph by American photographer Lillian Bassman. I loved the drama of the figure backlit against the sunlight flooding the room from the window. It illustrates a principle I'm always stressing to my students, and that is, for maximum dramatic effect, put the light behind the subject. That's going to create interesting shadows and compelling figure ground relationships. Being in control of the figure ground relationships is important because it's going to emphasize and clarify for your viewer what's significant in the image. Some of you in the studio audience let me know that I forgot about the little uh, hole between Zoe's arm and her torso. So I'm going to take care of that now. I'm going to go back to my paths palette and reselect that path and turn it into a selection and I will go back to the layer mask and again I can actually display the layer mask if I option click on that thumbnail and I'm just going to fill it with black and I'm also going to go ahead and blur it uh, with that same uh, Gaussian blur filter. So now we should be good to go. And you can see actually here, again, I have that same problem where uh, there's a little bit of the background showing. So let's see if I can take care of that with my, whoops, with my minimum filter. And there we go. So now we're ready to actually refine this edge along Zoe's hairline. And we're going to do that by painting right on uh, the layer mask here uh, with black. So I'm going to call up my, my brushes. And I'm going to choose a fairly uh, small uh, straight brush, which means, which means that it's opaque, which is what I want because I don't want to make, I want to make sure that um, I don't have any background uh, in the mask where I don't want it. And whenever I'm using uh, the brush tool with my Wacom tablet, um, I basically, I've, obviously I'm holding the stylus with my right hand and my left hand is on the keyboard where I'm using the bracket key to make the um, brush larger and smaller. And the shift bracket will make it um, softer. Right shift bracket will make it harder. And I can also easily um, flip back and forth between the colors black and white on, for the mask layer um, by hitting the X key, which will uh, switch back and forth the background color to the foreground color. And um, I really want to make sure um, that this hardness or softness of my brush is consistent with what I want the mask to be. Um, and this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and we're going to come back again after this and add back in those flyaway hairs um, with the little brush tool that I'm going to 
uh, we're going to make together. And lastly, I have my eye brush stroke, and or, I'm sorry, my eyelash stroke. And this is strictly for um, eyelashes. And the reason it is because it don't it won't go more than the length route of an eyelash. And so it makes these really nice, you can get really nice realistic eyelashes with this brush. If we look in the shape dynamics um, for the eyelash brush, we'll see that the main uh, control parameter is set to fade. Um, so that is, is the stroke is only going to travel uh, 128 pixels in this case. Paint those hairs on, so I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to call it hair strands. And again, I'm going to come in about well, I think I'm one to one, about 100 percent. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to I think I'll start on this side and give her her eyebrow and eyelashes back. Um, and so I'm going to I'll start with the eyebrow. And you can see here how it looks. Now I'm going to uh, make use of that rotate view command. So I uh, hit my R key. And I'm just going to rotate this like this so that my wrist is a little bit more in keeping with the, the, the way that the eyebrow kind of flows this way. Um, and now I obviously I don't want her eyebrow coming into her forehead so I'm gonna make a little impromptu mask I'm gonna actually grab the uh, mask uh, below it I'm going to um, hold down my command key or it would be the control key on a PC and click that thumbnail that gives me the selection of Zoe and then I'm going to inverse that selection and you can see there, there's my key command is uh, shift command I. And so now I'm ready to, I'm going to be able, when I paint in uh, the eyebrow, it won't, it'll just paint outside of here. And I'm going to sample the color from, from Zoe's hair. So I'm going to hold down my option key and just sample this color here. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to look at Zoe's actual eyebrow and do the best I can to sort of mimic it. Now you can see there's quite a bit of, of white space in there, and but the way that it curves over, it kind of makes its own outline. So I'm going to try to do that my, myself in my, my drawing. And the thing about doing things like this, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, it has to be good enough so that it does not draw attention to itself when it's in, in the artwork. Now, one of my favorite things to do is sometimes you'll get a hair where maybe it starts out dark, but then the sun hits it and it gets light. And you can kind of play with the color within a hair uh, by making use of the transparency lock in the layers. So I painted this strand dark here, but if I lock the, that transparency and then I switch to a lighter color, then I can sort of get part of it light and part of it dark. And this is how it looked in the finished version. Uh, so you can see if I hide the hair strands, there's the before and there's the after. So now I can get rid of the reference photo. I don't need that. And I'm just going to make a group of Zoe and her hair strands. And I'm just going to name this Zoe. And this is what I'm actually going to bring over to the back plate for the final composite. And the portrait on the wall is a family studio portrait. Now, both of these pictures within the picture are montages that I created just for the series. And so I can show you the genesis here. And 
And the picture of the family was especially complex because I didn't get the idea to make this studio portrait until after I had finished all of the photography and all of my models had dispersed and I didn't have access to them. So I had to really cobble it together from outtakes and from some images that I posed in and then photoshopped the actor's head in and my wife posed for Zoe and I photoshopped her head in. But I was really quite happy with, with the result. Whoa! Let's back up a second and I'll show you in a little more detail how I did that. So at this point in the process, I've already silhouetted the figures and pasted them together as a unit on one layer. And you can see that I've adjusted their levels and their the curves so that their mid-tones, shadows, and highlights more or less match. And for the background, I wanted pretty much just a And then lastly, I applied the vignette to the edges. When I finished the composite, I added a little bit of brown toning before printing it out. And then I put it in this old frame. And in addition to being in the diorama, I hung the frame picture in the exhibition along with the other prints from the series. And the gallery owner at the exhibition uh, didn't realize that it actually had the actors in the photo. She thought it was just a picture of my family from a hundred years ago. So I took that as a compliment. Please, 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 thank you.